brought me some pickle oh, yesterday, so I write more. And they were dill pickles. Where's our chocolate there? <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate everybody coming, and we want to try to get started on time. There's a DOT election, and some people have to get up and leave, so it's going to sort of be fruit baskets turned over because we need to vote. And um, if uh, we'd like f for DOT to present first, and uh, let's see, uh, who's going to present? Stephanie, are you? Okay. Mr. Golden. Mr. Commissioner Golden, is he the commissioner? Then? The interim commissioner. The interim commissioner Golden, and he's going to present. And uh, thank you, and thank you for coming. Okay. Is it on? Yes. Uh huh. Just sit anywhere; it doesn't matter. We got all your stuff right there. Okay, go ahead, please. Yes, we're going to stick straight to the amended budget. We aren't going to discuss anything on the 13th today. First page of our presentation, uh, you'll see there are FY12 business budget recommendation uh, is for $934 million. That's a $27 million increase over the previous year's budget. Uh, $937 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry, we can't hear it very well. You also see that a large portion of that is our debt service, which is at $279 million for the state of the this year. And as I mentioned the other day, that this is a total debt service is about over $400 million in our federal debt service. That makes us about 30% of our budget for FY12. You also see that we have about $100 million or 11% of our programs in our LB program. Uh, about 20% of our funds are routine maintenance activities. That's kind of our roadside and uh, mowing the grass and the main and regular maintenance activities we do. General operations is about 12%. And the second largest program we have is our capital program, which makes up our resources and major widening projects. That's about 27% of our program. A little over $250 million for this project. Hey, did you rather ask questions or you, if we go along? I'd love to ask questions. All right, if anybody has any questions, just raise your hand and, and we'll ask them as we go along if you have any questions on this. Okay, thank you. Uh, our quote of business recommendations for motor fuel taxes is really broken down a little further with more detail in the next, the next slide. Uh, again, we've got a $27 million increase uh, in, in motor fuel receipts. Uh, you'll see as you walk down the middle line, the actual change is, is in a couple of different programs. The, the primary, uh, the, the first program is the growing debt service and the GRB debt service. That's about an $815,000 uh, <coughs> redistribution of some modern debt service. Uh, you'll see a, An additional, uh, there we go, additional $26 million uh, in capital projects. Capital projects are really made up of our capital maintenance projects and our capital resurfacing projects. Our, I'm sorry, capital widening projects, our major widening projects. Routine maintenance, we've asked for a $21 million increase for routine maintenance activities, and you see a, a net um, minus $19 million under general operations. The reason that's requested is because of the fact that uh, some of our staff a couple years ago in the budget process was moved from this local maintenance improvement grant program up to what's called, uh, to our program that's called uh, capital administration or construction administration. Uh, the personal services was not moved with that particular program, so this kind of uh, reconciles that particular difference. At the bottom, you'll actually see a total of uh, $934 million to uh, tie those two budget items. We continue to break this down so that, uh, for clarification, and so that you can actually see the numbers in a little bit more detail. I mentioned the $815,000 which is from the budget uh, re uh, redistributions of some debt service, uh, $27 million increase in motor fuel, uh, which would, again, go down, broken down to routine maintenance activities. You'll see the $21 million is being moved into that particular program. That really makes up routine maintenance needs and repairs, and I, mentioned, I said that the other day and again today, which is really the core functions of what we do out there, cleaning pipes, mowing grass, uh, keeping welcome centers and rest areas open, uh, replacing guardrail, uh, replacing signs that are needed. 
the additional reporting expenses to maintain these level of services, and this is really related to some of the personal services on that side. Major facility repairs. Uh, we have several buildings around the state that are dire need of repair, uh, need roofs, le leak problems, uh, plumbing problems, uh, some environmental issues on those sites. And uh, we also need to set aside for emergency funds. The department's never actually had a program item or program budget for emergency funds. Uh, every year we get hit with these. Uh, this past year we've had a, a, some that total almost $9 million in emergency uh, hits. We had the, uh, the storms up in northwest Georgia with the tornadoes that came through. We've had ice storms. Uh, we worked down this year to help on the fires in South Georgia. Uh, we've had uh, you know, flooding, any of those types of events. But there's no budget item in our budget that covers this. And this is just to move some money in to help with those expenses. Uh, $26 million on capital construction. This is really one of the, the most important things we've got going at the department right now, which is to, to get those projects out to the public. And that's an additional $26 million in additional capital projects or widening type projects or intersection type projects. And then our local road administration redistribution that I mentioned earlier is $19 million is being redistributed back to the programs of capital construction. That's really, again, an, a personal services uh, related item. This next slide really breaks down our state general funds. Uh, again, that's a very small part of our program, but it's a very important and a very integral part of our program. Uh, this is our airport aid, our ports, our rail, and our transit programs. Uh, as you'll see here, the, uh, the t total decrease for this particular year will be about a $374,000 decrease, which represents about a 5.6% 5, 5 decline compared to our original uh, program budget. This reflects the 2% reductions that the governor's requested. Uh, starting down at the, the very first one, which is airport aid, you'll see a reduction of about $55,000. Uh, I have a question. Sure. By reducing that by 55000 how much federal money are we losing? Probably in the neighborhood of about $2 million uh, is what the net so is. So we could spend $55,000 right. and, and the, the, get the, $2 the, million. the typical match is 95% federal, 2.5% state, 2.5% local. So our 2.5% that we take down is a, is a loss there. How yeah. does our uh, reimbursement and pulling down federal money for airports go with other states? How do we line up? I would say that we don't have uh, a lot of money going into our program. We're a very small program and uh, a lot of opportunity there. I think we showed some slides yesterday and we'll be sharing some presentations with you about how important the 103 plus airports are. But uh, I think that we are very small in the airport program. Okay, and one other question over down on your transit. I know I live in a rural area, and uh, Department of Human Services had they contract to have transit. Do you coordinate with them on any of your transit things? Is there any coordination yeah. between this uh, and Department of Human Services? Yes, I think most of the programs that we could are pass through type programs. But uh, Carol, I'll just make sure that. that I mean. Yes. <clears throat> Okay. Correct. Uh, yes, just what number are you? 23. 23. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Floyd, I see you back there. Welcome. Um, dealing with airport aid, and we had a brief discussion on general funds earlier and, and also earlier with the, the chairwoman. Um, this 296000 in the audit that was state general funds that you returned to the, the Department of Treasury for FY11, what programs were was that money from? It, it's more than likely, more than likely, it's going to come across several of those programs. Say, for instance, what happens is we may have a grant that's established on a, or a purchase order on a contract, and what happens is you deplete all the money that you need on that particular contract, and any of those extra dollars that are left on it then goes back into surplus. But if you want a breakdown, I can give you a breakdown by program. I would, and, okay. and, and here's the reason being, is if, we're, if we have general funds that are left over that aren't being used that you're putting back in, once it goes into the reserve fund, we can't touch it anymore. And, and I'm curious, within the FY12 budget, if we're going to have surplus funds, general funds, but the, the slide that you're giving us is show that we're, we're cutting 643000 in general funds. This is not motor fuel funds. These are general funds. Um, well, this are we going to have any surplus? Is if we are, we we want to know beforehand. Basically, what I'm I'm getting sure. at. We can do it. We can run those lines out. I think Carol. 
because if we had a if we had a surplus of two hundred ninety six thousand last year, you know you took put that with the ninety five percent match just just an airport aid alone it's you know eleven twelve million dollars. And these are more than, lots of these are not on current year contracts they're on prior year contracts that it's extended out over uh, previous years and that's when they draw down <clears throat> that we can work and coordinate definitely. Um, with your committee before you're enclosed to, you know, to bring that up. Well, what about before we do the amended budget? And just for the record here, you have returned the 296000 is not in any of your accounts. Mm -hmm. We're required to transfer that at year end. Our accounting office is required to transfer that. Um, and Deputy Blinsky every year with OPB sends out a notification and we transfer those. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Representative Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, one quick question, though, and I'll get back to uh, go back to what the chairwoman asked. Um, it, this has been a pet peeve of mine for the last several years. Y'all know that on this airport aid stuff. In uh, a lot of what's going on in Washington, of course, we none of us know what's going to happen there. But but isn't there some concern that we may lose those federal dollars? And if we don't go on and capture them this year, that next year this program may not even be there for us to to bring down those federal dollars with this small of match. I think Carol, you even reported yesterday. Did they not make progress on the aviation? They have made pro Congress has made progress. Uh, they made top three in the House uh, to the Conference Committee for the Senate. But you know, certainly being able to, to strike while the iron is hot during the current fiscal year is, is certainly you know a fiscally sound thing to do. Right. And we mentioned before this this would kind of in this particular year would defer two projects, which would have been the ideal court, uh, Cook County location and the Lagrange Callaway. <laughs> Airport, so. Well, do you represent Cook County? <laughs> 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 two of your subcommittee members represent those two areas. Huh? <laughs> wow. We'll be deferring those to the well, next year. I, I promise you, when I asked those questions, I did not know it. I, I mean, I'm just concerned sure. that, that we're leaving federal money up there. Yeah. I, I think any any time you lose that opportunity, that that's in the, we. we and I think Jay has a point. We don't know what they're going to do next year, and You're and we I think we need to take advantage if we can. Exactly. Any ha other questions on it, Jay? One, one follow up, Madam Chairwoman. Carol, may you make an answer to this? How much have we cut that program over the last couple of years? Interesting. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's a big hit. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. We'll no, no, no problem. That's exactly what we're here for. Uh, I would go on to say that uh, we talked about the the, the ports and uh, the sixty six thousand uh, dollars in savings that you see there is really a savings of personal services that we didn't use, but you'll also see that we've amended in or requesting an enhancement of two hundred thirty five thousand dollars, and that's to go to pay for the port activity, the the taxes on the property taxes for where we do the the. Uh, dredge material on the Jasper County, South Carolina side. Mm -hmm. Our total bill is a little over $640,000. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, our total tax bill will be about $640,000. Who do you do this dredge? Who benefits from this dredging? The, the Ports of Authority of Georgia and the State of Georgia. The, port, the Ports Authority gets the benefits? Well, the, the state does, obviously. That's a huge economic engine for us. And oh, I agree. Can I ask one more? Yeah, go ahead. And, and before we leave the airport, aid, okay. <laughs> okay. going back, going back, um, if if you took uh, let's say the two hundred ninety six thousand that you 
sent back to the general treasury this past year. Uh, is there a way that you can? There, there's no way within your accounting that you could have moved that over in the airport, eh? Correct? No. Mm -hmm. Because it's a prior year contracts, the prior year. They were already committed dollars that come in. So That's came in. It came in under budget. Now, That's why. None of that money was state aid. One hundred percent of it was from motor fuel. That no, that was state aid. This is all state aid. Um, airport at the airport aid, ports, rail, and transit are all state general fund dollars. Motor fuel can't be. Used. I know, I realize that, but the, we're talking about the reserve, the money that... State general funds. That's what was sent back with state general funds. And the reason that is, is if it was current year dollars that were taken down on a project, I could have recommitted those in the current year budget. The problem is there are dollars that are lo left over on a prior year contract that is now being closed out or a grant that's being closed out and those dollars are released, and we cannot bring those back into the current year budget because they're from a prior budget year. They're, they're returning to state. Right, and we're required by law to bring those back in to surplus property. Uh, yeah. the, the reason I'm, I'm getting confused on these is because the audit says current year dollars, Look. not previous years. It says it right here. I'm, I'm looking right at it. It's page two of the, the, the January 19, 2012 audit. It says... Mm -hmm. Uh, summary of, of remittance of surplus and appropriated state funds for current year, $296,969.39. The prior year was over $4 million. The prior year was over $4 million. Let, let me look into that and see what that is. We'll bring you back a full report. I'll make sure and, you get a full And that's why the, the, the technical language of what we're talking about is why I'm getting confused sure. on which dollars is which. Sure. Uh, yes. Uh, Thank you, Madam Chair. Since we went back to the airport aid, is there any other options that we could uh, exhaust to, to make sure that we don't lose the $2 million, potential $2 million from the feds, anything else that you can recommend for a cut? I, I, would, I would say that, you know, obviously, you know, not, not moving the money out of this program and finding a different place to redirect that 2 percent from is, is, is an option. Uh, the, the big thing we have right here is this, uh, this particular year is trying to cover this ports Bill, though, trying to move the money around and do some redirect to cover the, the taxes for the Jasper County uh, property over there. So that's the big thing. Some of these things that we resulted are in savings. We, we mentioned, like down here at Transit, the $480,000 that you see. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, that's $400,000 of that, and I, I failed to mention that the other day very clearly, was the fact that uh, we started charging some of our people that work in those programs to 100% federal projects. They used to be able to charge like 80% of their time to a federal project and 20% to a state. Now they're charged 100% time. So we recognize those savings, and that's part of the redistribution, probably the biggest component in redistribution. But when you really do the 2% cuts that, that we were asked to do, and then you move around that little bit of money, there's not much left to cover those, those port, uh, port costs or for the property tax. Um, would you add anything? I think Carol would, uh, would vouch when I say this. It, we have squeezed every dime out of our general fund programs. We went from being roughly around a $24 million program um, a few years back down to less than $7 million. She has, currently has roughly around 15 vacancies in that program. Um, it has become very difficult and challenging for her to even operate that program in the current condition. So for us to have to choose something, it would be very challenging for her because there is, I'm going to be honest, there is no fluff. There is no extra um, things to be moved. Prime example is like on the Jasper County property taxes. In 2000, we went from paying $146,000 a year up to $640,000 a year. Well, we realize that. We're just trying to find some money, okay? We're, just, we're trying to help you, not criticize you. <laughs> right. Let's get that straight. We're trying to help you. Yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. And please don't think, I mean, don't, don't, you know. Sure, not a problem. Uh, I agree. Madam all right. I, I want to get that. We're trying to help you. Jay, do you have another question? No, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. All right, no, uh, okay, uh, go ahead. Okay, and again, I, I mean, if there's any other questions on any of this particular thing, but you, you can see that for the most part our savings have been from reduced personal services or, or uh, maybe opportunities to charge to a federal project, and that's where we've gained most of our reduction and able to try to cover that enhancement. I want to ask you a question about, uh, and I, I, real, I love the ports, they're under my budget, I realize what they're doing and everything, but this uh, tax on this property, 
<laughs> Can you rebuild the Ports Authority since for that 235000 I think uh, from, we, we've had that conversation to ourselves internally, uh, whether that's an option or something that could be pursued. Uh, one of the things that we, we look at is I think we have to own the property <coughs> because we own the, the dredging when the, we actually get the permits and we actually dredge that particular thing and we're responsible for the environmental cleanup. Uh, but mm -hmm. we probably could have some options if there was something on the table where we could work with them to try to get some kind of reimbursement or some kind of participation. All right. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I? All right. Uh, see. On that note, I, I'd like to know what the discussions and the negotiations went, that went on with Jasper. I, I was under the impression that this was a joint venture between Georgia and South Carolina, and I'm, I'm really curious why we're paying tax on dirt that we're giving to South Carolina. Are we charging them for this dirt? No, th this is the, the material that's dredged out of the river when we deepen it, right. and it's moved over and dewatered. But we own all of that property. Uh, now, we did just do a recent land swap as a part of this environmental agreement to, to, sw to give them some of the property that they could use uh, for, for whatever purposes that they may want. That's a part of an environmental agreement that we did with on this, trying to get the deepening approved. But that's... Uh, are we charging anything? Are we... we that, actually, his question it, it, is... As a part of the settlement, we actually are deeding the property over to them. Therefore, we wouldn't be paying the taxes in the future. Some, it's about 9,200 acres total. It's a when, when are we deeding the, the property over? Uh, we're in the process as a part of the, as the governor's been working to try to get the, the, the South Carolina to clear the environmental portion of the, the dredging and the deepening of the, the harbor. Well, I, I'm really curious on why we're paying taxes on property that we're doing a joint venture with South Carolina. That's yeah, what I'm getting Matt, at. That doesn't make any sense to me. Matt wanted me to emphasize that the piece that we're deeding over is a very small piece. It's not, it's not a, a, the 9,200 acre track. It's not, it's a very small piece of property. 9,200 is a pretty big Piece of property, you're that, No, that's what we own. That's about what we own. Oh, I thought you said you no. It's a small piece of the 9200 that would be deeded to them as a part oh, of this no. agreement. Uh, Representative Roberts, how, and and I guess I'm following up on the chairman. So, how how much, basically, of Georgia are we giving to South Carolina? I mean, how much land? I mean, are we <laughs> giving to another state? I mean, I, and. Couldn't use it as a mitigation bank. We, yeah. Why? Why? Why are we giving away wetlands when we're buying wetland credits? Well, that's what I'm asking. Mitigation bank. But it, don't we buy wetland credits? We do. Every yes. year, every well, year. why don't we, why are we giving it away well, if we are buying wetland credits? Well, again, I think this has been a long negotiation in that particular quarter to, to get them to sign off on allowing the. Deep, the harbor deepening to go on, so that's been just part of one of the settlement items. Is that in writing? Yes, there are agreements between uh, they're being worked out between the Corps of Engineers, uh, between Georgia and Southport County. Well, can can we can we ask a question to I mean to to whoever if it's the governor's office that's handling it and all then. We need to end that negotiation when we're giving that away as I have an understanding that they don't charge us property taxes. I mean, to see if there's a way that we can settle that within this as well. So as going forward, they don't go up on the taxes like they did this year to the amount of $250,000. that part I'm just saying as far as property taxes go we're going to negotiate with them on this other negotiate on on property that. bring that into the equation yeah it, yeah as, as a follow-up to that you say we're going to use 15 or 1600 acres of that for the the joint venture that's that's actually working to try to get the environmental document
cleared, the, the settlement to get the document cleared so we can move forward with it, the deepening. All right. What are we going to do with the other 75, 7,600? That's, that's where, where, where we, when we, again, as Carol mentioned, we're still responsible for the portion of the river that's in the Georgia piece. And we, as we deepen it and dredge that material, you dump it over there and you dewater it. And sometimes that material can be reused. But it, that's where you put your spoil, actually, as you dredge it. That's On 9,200 acres? Worth? You and you, Man, you, you go through a deep watering process. Yeah. Well, I can't imagine the value of that land would be worth anything. It's, it's very much more. Again, it's over the years. I, I've been down there myself a few times, and a lot of rattlesnakes and a lot of, a lot of grown-up stuff. Because you uh, can't build on it. No. So I mean, I don't know what they have it valued at, but it doesn't sound like it's the well, value I, of the land. I won't, I won't speak to what it is, but it's been obviously that's a bargaining tool that they've used very wisely. So. Apparently. Thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, again, uh, we also, this particular, uh, the governor's recommendation is to bring forward $269 million of prior year motor fuel funds. These funds would go to the capital program. Uh, $249 million of that would go to the capital program. This is truly for capital construction and capital maintenance, which was resurfacing top products around the state. Uh, this is much needed to take care of a budget situation that we've talked to you about briefly. Uh, and then we have uh, $20 million that the governor's recommended to come in with the project delivery and oversight uh, program. That's actually delivering these projects, the, the engineering, the environmental work, the, the survey work that goes into getting these projects ready to go. That's a program that's been a little underfunded, and we've been working with the uh, Office of Planning and Budget to, to remedy that. Any questions there? Is $20 million sufficient or uh, representative is, is 20 million sufficient I mean or 20, 20 million is uh, going to maybe allow us to skirt by in, in 12 uh, with, with some amendments but it's lower than what we requested yeah, it's lower than what we requested. what'd you request um, in order for us to currently right now we're projecting a shortfall of close to 50 million dollars okay thank you and the, the last slide in our particular presentation really just talks about prior year motor fuel funds and make sure that the, the committee is kind of clear on, you know, kind of how we actually get those. And there's a couple of different ways they're created. We're always going to have prior year motor fuel balances. Uh, typically, the conversion of eligible prior year motor fuel expenditures to federal projects. Um, and so, uh, again, as we, as we bring those funds, we, we, the federal program is a reimbursable program, and that's what the, one of the things that makes the Department of Transportation a little different than other state agencies. We front the projects with, you know, 100 percent, in some cases 100 percent state funds. In some cases we go ahead and recognize the revenue if we authorize the project. But when we get that reimbursement, when it comes back into the program, it comes back in at an 80 percent. So we, we build them for 100. They reimburse us for 80. When those dollars come back in, they're prior year motor fuel. Uh, the other way that you get a balance in that particular program is when you release dollars. In other words, uh, back to kind of what we were talking about earlier, when you close out a project, if it came in under budget, and you close those projects out, let's say it was a $10 million project, uh, it was completed for $9 million, that $1 million, is, when it comes back in as a closed out project, comes back in as a prior year motor fuel balance. Um, typically these balances are really used for, you know, kind of keeping the program going. Uh, we are kind of operating at the Department of Transportation right now on a, uh, kind of a month-by-month -month scenario for planning purposes. The uh, federal program has been very unstable, as you know, in Washington. Uh, they did go ahead and extend out the transportation to, for, for one year, but uh, as of just the other day, we've received about half of our federal year allotment for this year. We're well over half of the year now, and we've received less than half the $1.1 billion that we're supposed to receive. Uh, and the way we keep our programs going is kind of using these, these prior year motor fuel, going ahead and using state motor fuel dollars to get these projects out, get them delivered to the public, and then convert them to the federal project when the federal pro funds are available. Uh, Representative Roberts. I'm sorry. Get, get in, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. He's got trigger happy down here. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. So that, that, that's one of the ways that, you know, the, the, the prior year motor fuel balance has been used. And uh, we've obviously hit some snags. We've talked a little bit about that with a lot of you. Uh, and we're working to, tr to try to remedy that. We've been working with OPB, uh, state audit, state accounting, uh, the governor's office, you, you name it, they've been working with us to try to remedy that situation. But And we'll be bringing some legislation forward this year to try to remedy that. Uh, Representative Roberts. Oh, I think, and I'll pull it out real quick and make sure I'm right. They only recognized within the um, recommendations, though, is it 269? 269, 269 million. That's the, the governor's recommendation, yes, sir. 
So that leaves us with roughly 700, 900 million? 982 less 269, yes. Yeah. On the, on the books, it's just going to be sitting out there? No, sir. I think we've been working with, uh, again, with Attorney General and his staff and others about ways to maybe work through the amendment process to the amended budget to try to get that resolved, to get it in the right programs that will give us the flexibility that we need to work with you guys to bring it forward for whatever programs, typically capital construction. But to be clear, they only recognize 269, and we need to recognize all of it. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Representative Davis. Now, I, I suggested we use it in just in bu budget language that we reauthorize it and not put any of the money as, as dollar figures in there because we've already appropriated the money. Right. However, by only doing $269 million, it, it basically we can't add the 700 and something in there because it would make our, our budget figures off, mm -hmm. and we would have you know, an unbalanced budget at that point. I don't think this, uh, these funds actually are accounted against your budget projections or your revenue projections. Uh, right we've we've right. clarified since they're prior year dollars. Yeah, but if you're looking at the sheet there, he, he actually put it in the the budget line. The hundred, the two hundred sixty nine million is in the budget as as appropriated dollars. Did he not? But they're listed. They're listed as other other funds, Representative Davis. They do not go against your current year revenue estimate at all. So if you look at the revenue estimate that's projected for the year, since they're other funds, they're not calculated against your current year revenue estimate. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> An accounting trick. Yeah. All right. All right. Any other questions that you'd like to ask from us today? Anybody have any other questions? Uh, thank you and appreciate you coming you. and uh, you'll be hearing from us because we'll have some I think she has a couple more questions we need to get cleared up before the budget thank you, thank you. Thank you guys. thanks uh, Commissioner Eccles if we'll go on with PSC now and uh, I know some of us have to have DOT I think I said DOT election so uh, okay all right, we've got 25 minutes, and I know we've got some uh, questions. Good afternoon. Am I on here? Good afternoon. Yes. Uh, the way I want to uh, do this, Madam Chairman, if you don't mind, is to just uh, just a brief history lesson on the commission. And well, then I, I think we all know about the commission. And then I, I want to go into. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that, but we don't have long. Then I, I want to go know about into the, the seven questions and then other questions that that you may have. Uh, I, I want to illustrate. Well, first, first, let me say that concerns that you all may have heard or have about us being able to meet our budget or being over our budget, we are going to be within our budget we've we've met that's going to happen so well I, I think let me say this I think one of the concerns we have is when we saw how much you'd already spent I think right now you've spent over over and we y'all gonna be able to to get it down so you do within the we, budget we are so 164 thousand and we are going to be able to get it within the budget we had a long meeting about it yesterday it will happen okay. so uh, l let me just illustrate our budget really with the nine million dollars that we have, and I've got a penny for each million dollars. And if you if you take one of the most important functions that we have in the commission, which is facil facilities protection, the gas pipelines under under the ground throughout the entire state, pipelines that can, if not properly stewarded, can result in accidents like in San Bruno, where a, a you know a community of people uh, devastated, uh, and so two million dollars. $2 million, 80% uh, of which is a, a federal drawdown, is, is dedicated towards protecting those facilities. We, um, we need more investigators. Uh, just like in the GBI, their people are being stolen away by the feds. We've got consultants stealing our people away, paying them more money. And with, when it comes to pipeline protection, you've got to have a degree of of training and certification before you can go out there and manage these pipelines. Uh, another another million dollars uh, for our rent on these two office buildings, the two floors of the two office buildings that we have, our commissioner travel, our telephone, our operating expenses. Uh, another uh, another million dollars for uh, 
for our administration. And um, Madam Chairman, the lion's share of our budget, this five million, these five pennies representing 5.5 million in utility regulation. And this is clearly our most important task, protecting consumers against monopolies, because you know what? Monopolies tend to bully people. That's why this commission was created in 1879, to protect consumers against railroad companies. Not only, not only passengers on those trains, Madam Chairman. Can, but, I, can I interrupt you now? Yes, ma'am. I think we're all familiar with what the PSC does, and we appreciate you explaining that to us one more time. But, but what we're interested in right now is the money. Madam Chairman, what I'm trying to demonstrate is that the legislative fathers in this state created this as the most u unique agency in the state. There are, there's one ag commissioner, there's one labor commissioner, there's one insurance commissioner, and there are, there are five elected, statewide elected officials within this one agency. Madam Chairman, these pennies represent $400 million. Uh, 400 pennies representing $400 million that is in play, in dispute, every single year with utility regulation. So what I'm saying to you, Madam Chairman, is that these nine pennies that we receive in our budget in an attempt to save consumers in this state money that impacts their own personal economic development uh, is in play. And when we do not have the tools that we need, we do not do the job that, that, that our legislative fathers in the, uh, intended for us to do as constitutional officers. So, Can I ask a yes. What uh, number one tool do you need? We need people, sir. We need people because Why? because when when we are when we are doing a, a rape case and we are attempting to save Georgia consumers some of this 400 million dollars, we can't just rubber stamp what the power company or the gas company says. We we need the people to we dig. That. We know that, Commissioner. We know you can't rubber stamp that. Don't, don't make us look like we, we don't understand that. But what I'm saying is what realistically can we do to, to help you do what you're talking about? You, you know, you say people. I mean, I, I, people or what? I, I think one of, the, one of the most strategic areas that we have is our consumer protection unit, which is, which is really not doing the job that it used to do because we've whittled the thing down. We're not doing the education and outreach that we used to do to help consumers save money on their gas uh, and electric bills. Well, uh, aren't y'all having some different, uh, different parts of your department? Aren't they going to be moved out? Will that help y'all any and, and cut your budget some? A, a, a measly three people, which, which is the transportation unit, who, who don't have guns or badges or flashing lights. These folks are going to be moved, uh, Lord willing, over to the Department of Public Safety where they do have guns, badges, and flashing lights so that the rogue companies that are ripping off our consumers around this, around this state can be, can be handled. And right now we've been able to do it. But that's, that's, that's a couple of hundred thousand dollars uh, well, out of our budget. Well, a couple of hundred thousand would help you put in, be, get in line. Well, when we when we send those folks over, we're, we're sending the money with it. So you That's cut the deal. Your, 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 the deal is that you'll cut your budget by a couple hundred thousand with those people. We're going to have to cut it by those right. three people plus okay. the seventy thousand that we get from tow truck registration every year. Okay. That's, that's that's being moved over. All right, uh, Representative. Uh, thank, 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 thank you, Madam Chair. Where's where's Public where's service. the tow truck being moved? Public service. Public service. Public safety. Public safety. Public safety. Public safety. Department of Public Safety. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Representative Davis. That wasn't my question. That was his. Okay. Right. I don't know why. I don't know why you wanted me to ask it. <laughs> um, Commissioner, as you can see, this this committee's you know really digging down into this budget and paying attention. H have you seen this document? This was a document that was given to me earlier this week from your department that basically said stated that you couldn't make the budget. Can can you help us? You know, you said when you started that you're going to make the budget by. The, the the governor's proposal is that correct? We're going to make that. We okay. are. Can can you kind of tell us a little bit about this document, or is this what your meeting yesterday was about? Yes, that was what my meeting with our staff was was about yesterday, and in, in finding out precisely how we're going to do that. They've they've taken me line by line on how we're going to do that, including whittling down our consumer uh, our, our consumer protection unit even more, laying and, off. And employees. that's what you were just uh, discussing with the three people. That's correct. 
Yes. Right. So, so this this document is no longer then. You can throw that document away, sir. Okay. Thank yeah. you. That, I just want to make sure that what we're what we're talking about now is not what what we got earlier this week, but what we're talking about now is the governor's proposal, and you're 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 stating to us that you guys can somehow make that work. Well, I, we will make it work, and we'll we'll cut deeper deeper into the muscle in order to do it but we will do it i mean we're not going to run our budget over what we have uh and we've got uh, you know a, a great budget staff to do that and we'll take evasive action to make sure that that well, doesn't happen well right now uh, you've Thank got you. 164,000 you've got to sort of make up correct that's correct can you give us a plan on how you're going to do it yes terry are you here uh, we're going to lay off three people out of our Consumer Protection Unit. Uh, you know, to well, begin. you know, I sort of feel like that you're sort of doing this like when you told us you were going, people told us they were going to cut 4-H, you know, that people are going to scream when you allow people on consumer protection. Is there no other way you can cut? I really, I really don't there's think so. There's no other way you can uh, cut. Yeah, I, I, You've looked at all your expenses, and there's no other way you can cut. There's no other way we can do it without, without cutting into the consumer protection Well, you know, unit. a lot of uh, agencies furloughed. Have you furloughed in any of these hard times? We, we have lost a have lot. Have you furloughed? Of, we have lost a lot of employees. Uh, by, by attrition, we've got... Uh, no, that's not my question. Have you furloughed employees during this hard time? Yes, Deborah, would you come up here with your mic? Uh, so... Debra, this is our executive I, I director. I just wanted to know Deborah if y'all are furloughs and employees. <laughs> I mean, I know uh, the Department of Human Resources, almost every agency even in public health mm -hmm. has had to furlough employees. Have you furloughed employees? Yes or no? No. We did not furlough any employees. Okay. But the first the year when everyone took the furloughs, we did take the cut for the same amount of dollars as the furlough would have been. It was about $164,000 from our budget. What did you cut from? Uh, various accounts. Probably uh, most of it would have been personal services because uh, the lion's share of our budget is personal services. Okay. So uh, I know, uh, aren't some of the other agencies still furloughing? I personally don't know. I have you thought about furloughing? Yes, we have thought about that. But uh, we do have the work that needs to be done, though. Well, I uh, think defects, a, public, yes. public health, all, I mean, we all have had work that needs to be done. But in this, we've had to tighten our belts. Exactly. And uh, we always keep the, you know, that is, you know, an option. You know, I mean, I don't like furloughs any more than mm -hmm. other, but exactly. I think a lot, of, a lot of people had rather furlough and everybody spread it around and take a day off than, than somebody losing their job. I think a lot of agencies felt that way. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Representative Roberts. Okay, I will. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Can, can, you said throw away this document that we got the other day, but I, I just want to ask one question uh, that, that when we were going over it, it, it kind of stuck out to, to most of us, and that is uh, the difference on your travel by $50,000. Can you explain that? Yes, yes, I can. Oh, first of all, there's not one of these five statewide elected commissioner, commissioners that have s set their foot on a state helicopter or state airplane. Okay. So these commissioners are these commissioners are driving around the state, and were we not to drive around the state, we would never get to Valdosta or Osceola or Lagrange or Plains or Tifton or any other place in this state because we'd be confined to these offices here in Atlanta, and which is counterproductive to. Uh, what I believe is our duty to go out and and listen to consumers. So we have gone over on on our travel budget. Well, can you answer and, and answer this? And, and listen, I I don't disagree about you need to, to meet with constituents around the state. But uh, when you start looking at cutting into consumer protection versus maybe cutting back on travel, can you explain to me though that the federal government. I, I realize furnishes vehicles, you do have to keep up with the operation and maintenance of them. Uh, you want to address that a little bit? I mean... Yes, sir. The two pennies that represent these pipeline safety, the vehicles in this pipeline safety, we just received federal funding for eight vehicles for that specific program. So the only commissioner driving a car is Commissioner Wise. The other four commissioners drive their own vehicles. Uh, so, And the other cars in the agency 
are state cars and not eligible for, for federal funding. All right, let me ask you this. Is there a vehicle uh, available for each commissioner to drive? We would have to purchase some vehicles, uh, which, which we, we have two pool cars. Uh, one of them is a 1979 Crown Victoria with a couple of hundred thousand miles on it, and the other is a 1995 Impala. Uh, so those are the two cars that are available that a commissioner could get in. And frankly, you know, I'm the newest commissioner. I have the highest travel expense. I drive a natural gas car around the state, and I drive that natural gas car because I'm promoting alternative fuel, which is one of the things that I ran for the statewide elect elected office on. And I don't want to drive a 1995 Impala because I'm promoting uh, alternative fuel, and it's important, it's important to me, and I believe it should be an important part of our public policy in the future. Would you like me to go through these seven questions that you sent over? Well, the first of all, the, uh, I guess it's question number one that I sent over about the uh, fund for um, the, let's see, which one, the Georgia Relay Fund. We're going to hold that back. That's not in appropriations right now, but after the session, we'll be reviewing all these funds that you're holding. And you know what? The legislature gave us stewardship over them. The legislature can take them away. Uh, that, I'm not you know. saying take them away. I, I, we, I just had, you know, I have, uh, I think you're aware we had a rally the other night, uh, the, yesterday, or day before, last week at the Capitol about uh, all children in Georgia hearing. Yes, I'm just real interested that all children have hearing aids, and if you're giving hearing aids, I want to see how many children are getting hearing aids. Just things like that. And, and letting the uh, people know and people at the uh, Atlanta School for the Deaf, they know that these hearing aids are available. I just want to see if you're doing it. And, and you know what? That outreach program, we should be traveling the state talking about this, impro this program so people can take advantage of the $14 well, that's million what, dollars that's what we're sitting gonna, there. That's what we're going to talk about. But we'll talk about that after the budget. And, and, Madam Chairman, we, we don't have anybody traveling the state talking about that well, other not, than a commissioner that may speak at a Rotary Club from time to time. Well, I, well, we've got – I know we've got uh, Comrade Yates that was at the Capitol yesterday mm -hmm. the other day about – and they had a rally about uh, children getting insurance to pay for hearing aids. I don't know if you had anybody over there or not. It was just right across the street. Yeah, not uh, – Okay. Did, but didn't hear we'll about it. Would have been happy to do it. But. Uh, we'll talk about that after the appropriations budget is set. We're going to look into that. Thank you. All right. Uh, the, uh, we were wanting to know about the rate case, how much it really cost. Yeah, the last rate case with Georgia Power cost about $400,000 uh, to conduct that rate case, and again, uh, for, for consultants. And again, as we, th these, this is, you know, uh, reams and reams of, of documents, you know, for uh, us to go through, and of course, if you've ever been over to the commission, it's you know the hearings are conducted mu much like a judicial hearing. So we ha we have to have a stenographer transcribing everything, uh, and it's uh, it's quite a lengthy process. And again, four hundred million dollars uh, of, of you know of money in dispute every single year, which is why it's important for How us. How often can can you file a rate increase? Every three years, there's a there's an IR. You know, we get okay. the IRP. So a, a a person can only file it once every three years. Well, that's the IRP. You can file file for uh, for a rate increase every year. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, the the companies have the right to file every year, uh, but some of the recent rate cases, we've been uh, fortunate enough to have a have it conclude with a, an agreement with the companies to stay out for three years. Okay. And so that's why Georgia Power over the last uh, dozen years or so has come in about every three years, and okay. that's by agreement. But if the company did not agree to that, then they would have the right to come in annually. All right. Uh, Representative uh, Davis. Uh, on, the, on the rate cases, is, is, what's the fee? I mean, is there, I mean obviously this is $400,000 state dollars that, that it cost us to do a rate case. Um, what, what is the fee for, for a company to, to request it? Zero for them to request it. Of course, it's not just Georgia Power. It's Atlanta Gaslight. It's the telephone companies, and you can see all the different things that we do on this little grid that I gave you, the telephone companies that can also uh, apply So, because we regulate all the all these small telephone companies around the state. So uh, let's give an example. For a small phone company, um, 
it might be $100,000 uh, yeah, for uh, that rate uh, case. 250000 for Atmos Gas, you know, and 400000 for for Georgia Power. Yeah, I, I think we got a list on, on the answers to the questions there. But um, how, how many rate cases are we doing every year? How, mu how much are we spending on rate cases, I guess, is what I'm getting down to? Of course, last year w was big because it was it was a big Georgia Power rate rate case in 2000, uh, 2010. Um, we will have probably a number of small telephone company, three to be specific, rate cases this year. Atlanta Gas Light was on the same cycle with, uh, with, with Georgia Power. So it's not, we're not necessarily, Representative Davis, doing those all the time, though we're having, you know, fuel recovery hearings or, uh, you know, cost overruns, plant Vogel. The economic impact of our stewardship of the Vogel construction, $13 billion, mm -hmm. Uh, is, I'd say, probably the most important job that we have in the next, in the next 24 months. Uh, uh, and we review that every six months uh, and approve their, their expenses. Well, well, as we're looking for dollars, is, is there something that we can do legislatively that could, could offset some of these? Because I, I still don't know how, how much we're spending every – you said 400000 on the Georgia Power deal, but how much are we spending – per year on average for rate ca cases, and is there, is there a way for us to offset some of that cost um, legislatively, whether it be a fee or, um, because obviously there's, a, there's, there's an expense to the state if they do it, so I, it's not, it's not, to me it doesn't sound unreasonable. I'm a pretty conservative guy, I don't believe in new taxes. However, if, if they're doing something that's costing us money, then we ought to be able to offset that. We, actually, you did help us out of year or so ago with uh, House Bill 1233 in that the 400000 that we used to have to pay with state dollars to cover the cost of the consultants, that cost is now uh, charged to the uh, power company or whoever mm -hmm. files for the rate case. So, there, so there's not an initial filing fee for rate cases. The, they do cover the cost of the consultants per that bill, but that's not the total cost. There's the cost of uh, in-house for our staff and so, so, so you're telling me we didn't pay the four hundred thousand? Four thousand. No, the four hundred for Georgia Power, it would be four hundred thousand. For smaller companies, it would be less. But did, yeah, did, is it our money or is it your money? We did not pay. Or it their of, money? We did not pay it out of state dollars. Well, well, we would not pay it now under state dollars. Their last rate case was filed prior to twelve thirty-three. So, million so Georgia Power paid the four hundred thousand. This we didn't most, pay four hundred thousand. Correct, most recently. But now there's a law in place, so the next time they file a case, they will be paying the four hundred thousand. Well, so this this uh, this paper that you gave us, where you said the four hundred thousand per year by Georgia Power, Georgia Power paid it, not the state. I'm not sure what you're looking at. I'm looking at the answer to questions we gave you. Number two. And, and if Georgia Power wants to pay 400000 that's fine. That's their business. It's not ours. We're just interested in what the state pays. And that, yes. that was my point, Madam yeah. Chair. Yeah, let, let's be clear that the last 2010 before 1233 took effect, we did pay it. But moving okay. forward, the out thanks to you all, will be paid for by Georgia Power. That's not the whole cost, though. Obviously, you got you take the consultant data. you got to process it. you got to... Uh, You've got to so we won't be paying any of the outside consultants when this number two when it says for outside consultants a hundred thousand for the small exchanges none of that will be paid for by the state. Correct. Okay. Paid for by the companies. No, no, just just the outside con the outside cons uh, the outside consultants. If we initiate the case, we pay. If they initiate the case, they well, pay. Okay. So, again, if, if we ask for the rate case, whoever asks for it has to pay for it. Uh, so Moving forward. Yes. Okay. All right. With that said, in the past, we obviously have been appropriating you money for rate cases. Now, what you're telling me is that we're going to save – how many rate cases a year? I still haven't – and I'm not, tr I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm just trying to make sure I understand what we're doing. Is if you're paying $400,000 in 2010 for a rate case – and in 2012, we're going to pay nothing. We just saved four hundred thousand dollars. Is the way I'm looking at it. Exactly, and that's already been taken out of our budget. So we do not have those dollars in our budget any longer. So that's the question. Did you take it out this? It was taken out of this year's budget. It's been taken out of several. The, the past couple of years has dwindled down, and then the most recent amount was uh, the last so, of our consultant. So another way, when you went to cut your budget, it came out of the rate. 
the right, what, I don't know, the right, I won't say the right department, but that's where the, what? the utilities was where you yes. cut the budget by, by really by letting the power companies pay for this. Is that where you cut your budget? Um, I, I'm not sure <coughs> specifically which year. It, it's been over several years that we have not been appropriate. In your budget in history, in your budget history, yes. is that where you've been taking your cuts? By yes. that's some, how you've taken some of your cuts. Some of that, the cuts. Yes. Okay. And, and Madam Chair, if, if yes. uh, Representative Von Epps and myself would like to excuse ourselves for our DOT board uh, right. elections. Thank you, and thank you for coming. And any other questions? Be sure. I'm sure you'll have, you'll be back. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, uh, re any questions right now? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, I think okay. that was the end of the So, okay. ju just to clarify on this, you know, m by passing 1233, it did help the commission because it took a lot of a, a lot of burden off of us being able to pass those consulting charges on to a company like Georgia Power. That again, that's not that's not saying that uh, our people are twiddling their thumbs and they don't, you know, and, and that it's that it's all taken I, I, care I of. I wasn't implying that. What we were just trying to do is not saying you're twiddling your thumbs, not saying you're not working. We're just trying to see what it cost. That's all we're trying to do. See what the cost was. Uh, if if you take a look at your colored uh, sheet uh, that we that we passed out, you can just. just see how expansive uh, of an operation that we have at the Commission. You know, you know, we mentioned the pipes and the pipeline safety, and certainly this is an area that we want to continue to, to, to grow by having investigators, uh, additional investigators, particularly in South Georgia, which is uh, when I met with our folks three days ago, that's the, that's the area that we really need to add one more C uh, investigator. Uh, you can see just going down the right-hand side, uh, you know, 20 regulated phone companies. We've got the two natural gas distribution companies. We've got these certi certificated marketers uh, that we're tracking, uh, 84 municipal gas companies. All of the territorial uh, or, or, you know, or safety disputes going on around the state right now that we're having hearings and conducting the low-income assistance uh, you know, you guys mentioned the uh, the, the three PC, PSC administered funds, and I put those there. Question seven for you: the balances, uh, the Universal Service Fund, which has uh, a balance of seventeen point six. All right, the yes. Universal Service Fund. When uh, to administer the service fund, you administer it through your employees. Yes, our our employees are keeping track of that. We had the okay. hearings for the natural gas okay. fueling stations. Okay, do you stations. take the expense out of the, out of the service fund to administer it? Does the service fund have any expenses? I don't think the law allows us to do that. Okay, thank you. So the, the legislature clarified last year that we could extend natural gas operations uh, by putting natural gas fueling stations, which we, uh, the commission voted to do this year. You're going to see those popping up around the state. We also the legislature, you know, as a result of the deregulation in natural gas in 97, also authorized us to give that money uh, when needed to low-income seniors. And uh, we did make uh, make another distribution, uh, uh, you know, in that area to help our low-income seniors. Again, yeah, yeah, yes, let me give yeah, something strong. You know, the Universal Service Fund, didn't we pass a bill last year to sort of it will eventually do away with that fund? That was a Universal Access Fund. Access Fund. For telephones, yes, ma'am. Okay, I didn't see it. Okay, Access Fund. The, the current so fund balance there, that's uh, again on question seven, fund balance is uh, $10 million. Uh, okay, and that's eventually going to go completely away. It will eventually, uh, and there, I mean, there's dispute uh, around the state, uh, even in the legislature speed, you know, of which this is to decrease. We've had companies now come back, want to go back under uh, regulation, uh, which was, you know, part of, part of the agreement if they wanted to do that. So n now we have more companies that are under re regulation. So, but uh, my prediction is it... Are they it, under it, regulation so they can participate in the fund? Is that the well, purpose? Well, for whatever, what, you know, that, that, uh, that allows them to particip participate. So for, for whatever reason... You know, and for many of them, they're losing 5% of their landlines a year. 
uh, you all have talked to these uh, these small telephone companies, and they are required to provide service, you know, to everyone in their territory. So regardless of okay, well, uh, uh, but anyway, I was just trying to. I was thinking that fund when we passed that bill, it was going to eventually be depleted, and we wouldn't have to worry about that anymore. I thought that was. The way it was when we voted on it, I thought that was the way it was explained to us. I could be wrong. I don't have a very good memory, but I thought that's the way it was. It's it, not a specific there's no, deadline. There's, there's no deadline for uh -huh. that, but it, it will eventually happen. Right. Yes. Thank you. And then you see the fund balance on the telecommunication relay fund, uh, and that sits at, at 14.5. And, again, that's a pass-through. That's, uh, that's a ratepayer-funded uh, fund, not a taxpayer fund. You have other questions? Uh. Uh, can, can I address this this issue about um, these associations that we're a part of? These are not uh, these aren't uh, social entities. Uh, these I, I will be I will be heading to Washington along with a couple of the other commissioners February fifth, and one of the things that I'm going to be doing up there at, at this particular meeting is talking about the nuclear waste that's sitting at Georgia's two nuclear sites. And all of it, by the way, uh, is sitting there ever since the plant's been generating electricity. Our, our rate payers have been paying for it. And no one seems to really want to talk about this. And so this is an opportunity for us to go up there in our national association and kind of uh, for me to bang the drum on this and, and ask that our our rate payers be made whole, given that Congress has already spent all the money, by the way, and ha they haven't picked up a single pound of this nuclear waste. So this is one of the this, – this entity, NARUC, is, is, is a lobbying entity in part, uh, and, and it's an educational entity in part, and, and frankly, we're dealing with, with a highly technical uh, a subject matter when we're talking about – uh, Georgia Power or Atlanta Gaslight, and we're trying to, uh, and we're trying to hold these companies accountable. We we need we need this knowledge, uh, and it's a whole lot. In, in this case, it's more cost effective for us to be a part of the association than it is for us to hire a couple people to keep us up to speed. So that that's why these two things are are very important to us. So, but again, for this year, you know, in part of our in part of our effort to, you know, to you know, to cut this 164. I mean, we you know, we won't pay those dues, uh, and we'll. We Is will. that your dues, or that the expense of the travel? No, it's part of it, part of it is a, a substantial dues that we're not going to pay. I think, uh, I think in our eyes, it's seventy thousand. Yeah, Seven. so seventy thousand okay. dollars. Well, what do you get for that? Well, you, the, the NRII is, is the research arm uh, and, and education arm. So uh, I, I, know it, I know it sounds like, well, I mean, why in the world would you have to do that? But uh, this is, there, there are so many issues coming down the pike for us. We have 17 coal units at six plants where we're going to have to make a decision about whether to close these coal units or convert them to natural gas or add renewable energy to the mix. Uh, we've got fracking that's going to impact our natural gas prices. Uh, they're so, the EPA has a stranglehold uh, on, uh, on coal-fired plants uh, and could potentially put them out of business in the future. Uh, and energy policy attracts or, or pushes away economic development. You think about running that natural gas on to Kia and the impact that Kia is having uh, out, in, uh, out in West Georgia. Uh, it, it, is, it is very important for us uh, to be able to uh, to have sound policy here in the state in order to attract businesses. Think about what happened when the electric industry uh, uh, in, in California and the Northeast restructured and what it did to their prices and, and the signals it sent to the business community. We don't have that problem in Georgia because we have sound we have sound energy policy here and I just, I mean, I realize I'm a new commissioner. I'm, an, I'm a new official. But I tell you one thing, I've taken for granted this commission and the role that it's played in our state and the impact that it has. And so, Madam Chairman, uh, certainly not trying to insult the committee by, by reminding them of the importance of this agency, but, uh, I mean, it, 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 is, it, is, uh, it is a unique agency. Why, why in the world would the legislative fathers have put five 
elected officials in one single agency had it not been critical to the protection of consumers in the state. Any other questions? Chuck? Chuck, do you want to add something? You can use that mic if you want to, or come sit down wherever you're most comfortable. Chuck said he's done his time before. Yeah. Yeah, that, thanks a lot, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Uh, no, I, I, I think the chairman covered it very well. And, you know, these organizations do provide a lot of value to the commission. They do a lot of research. As the chairman said, uh, Georgia is a very coal dependent state. And, you know, we have to keep a watchful eye on what's going on in Washington. And we need that lobbying group up there fighting for that diversity. And, uh, it, it, you know, the, the NRI especially is, is a very important organization and, and out there fighting, you know, make, make sure. Because if, if we have to shut these coal plants down, uh, the, the electric rates in this state will skyrocket. And not to mention, not, not to mention uh, Madam Chairman, and you can ask Putnam and Baldwin County about this as they're shaking in their boots with a possible closure of plant branch units one and two in the and the impact that that will have on their school system and, and their communities. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we regulate uh, uh, these plants all over our state, and Georgia Power plays such an important role, you know, in the lives of, uh, in the lives of these communities. Any other questions? Any other questions? No. Thank you so much, and thank you for We need coming. a couple more pennies in here, madam. Uh, just a couple well, more. Well, I think every, uh, everybody does it this time, I think. Uh -huh. I might give you a penny. <laughs> <laughs> I can take, we can take care of that. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you for coming.